as the initiative order arrives at your character once again you look down eagerly at your remaining action points on your character sheet one left hmm what to do with that save it for a parry later on or maybe a dodge to avoid that incoming missile fire or do you use it there and then and try to land your weapon to give the opponent that fatal or deadly blow mm. decisions decisions well in this video i'm going to have a look at those actions which are sometimes forgotten about those actions that cost no action points at all. Yes, in this video, we're going to have a look at free actions and how they can be used in your combat. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back to another short and concise video all about the rules in the Mithras rule set. So over the years I've created longer videos which explored the main concepts of the game but recently I've started to make shorter more concise and compact ones to explore some of the other areas of the Mithras rule set. Um, last month I looked at the difference between intensity and magnitude in the spell system so if you missed it out on it then please do go over to this card now and you'll be able to hear all about it. So within Mithras there are various actions that you can use throughout combat and these actions are placed into three categories. First of all proactive actions these are offensive actions like hitting someone hitting throwing a weapon casting a spell or moving and then there are reactive actions um, which include things like parrying evading and interrupting and then there are free actions and free actions as their name suggests cost no action points at all and can be used throughout the combat rounds and turns so what are these three free actions and how can we use them well let's go to the most the self-explanatory ones first so first up drop weapon does exactly what it says on the tin yes you drop your weapon onto the floor or if you happen to be on a boat and you drop your weapon maybe it accidentally bounces on the wood and slowly tipples off into the water to sink below the whale waves mm. now signal okay this allows you to do a gesture or a signal to the participants of the combat or those generally in an in close proximity and yeah please nothing rude and finally use a look point uh, yeah it's quite lucky that you don't need to have an action to actually use a look point good idea okay so the first of the actions that lead need a little bit more extra explanation okay speak now this always makes me smile okay according to the rules the character can speak or utter words or sentences which would usually be communicated within five seconds now you need to remember that the full combat round in mithras is five seconds long so this is not speak at every turn or initiative pass this is for the whole combat round now, a good example that the core rule books gives is things like time to die, sucker, or something like that. Now, you need to be careful of players who wish to exploit the speak rule and maybe want to say, oh, out of character, out of character. Um, I want to tell, I want my character to tell the other um, party members that it's me in the shadows and not to be surprised if when I suddenly appear, if I say me from shadows, would this communicate this effectively in five seconds? Really? And while we're still on speak, then be careful of those fast talkers, especially if they're going like this as they're trying to get as many words out of their mouth as quickly as possible. 
Now, before we talk about the final two free actions being assess situation and ward location, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras and the rules, actual plays and um, play sessions. I create personal blogs and also my series on the gibbering GM when I look at aspects of game mastering, which I like. And if you are super interested, then why not press the bell button so you get a notification when a new video goes live. Now, if you would like to produce some extra support, then please consider um, becoming a Patreon um, on my Patreon page. The link is in the comments below or support me on Coffee KO. F -E. And just to let you know, there's a new set of tiers out on Patreon, which is all about um, RPG. So you can actually become a patron and get access to the world in which we campaign, the, the background information to it, and also my adventure notes shortly after the adventure has finished. Thank you for all the support that you give me. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, it's all every bit of support allows me to get one step closer to being a full time content creator. OK, back to the free actions. OK, next up, the free action called assess situation. Now, only characters who are not engaged in the combat can actually use this action. It requires a, a successful perception role, but if the character is successful, then it allows them to be alerted to any relevant changes in the tactical situation. This could be anything from someone beginning to charge as someone or sneaking and approaching from behind the party. Anything that you consider as a GM would be a change in the tactical situation. I always ensure that the difficulty grade of the perception role is adjusted accordingly based on the situation. For example, being dark or foggy might increase the perception grade to hard or formidable. Well, if the player character is on higher ground, then it might be easier for them to spot something in this situation. So I might degrade it, degrade, degrade it in the end to an easy will. And finally, ward location. Now this links to passive blocking and which is one of the rules that the rule gurus have taken on in the Mithras Matters podcast. It's in episode 21 if you'd like to go and check it out. However, ward location allows the player to dedicate their weapon or shield to protecting certain hit locations of their body. This is declared prior to the opponent rolling their to hit roll. But if the attack hits, the location being warded will automatically parry or block the attack and the damage will be adjusted accordingly to the size of the weapon. Now, this it can be a very advantageous action. Um, so especially if your character has low combat skills and couldn't even hope to land a blow, they can protect their important parts of their body, for example, their head, chest and abdomen, knowing that if it's hit, then it will automatically be um, absorbed um, by or parried by the weapon. Now, it has to be said here that the ward location continues until the character actively uses the weapon or shield that they're using to um, ward the um, location with. So this could be either attacking with it or even parrying with it. And that's it. Another short Mithras video completed. I hope this has been helpful and that you will start to use those wonderful actions that cost no action points at all, but can in the right situation be extremely helpful. Remember, if there are any smaller rules that you would like me to explore, then do let me know in the comments below. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Until next time, 
Happy Mythrasting, everyone. See ya. Bye.